Hello everyone, hope you are well today. I want to show you my latest project which consists of a Raspberry Pi Zero, a 4 relay board and a SIM 800L GSM module. With this kind of project you can control stuff with your phone and it doesn't have to be a smartphone. Basically you call a number and you press some keys and something happens. It could be a light, you want to remotely control a gate, maybe a door. So as you can see here I'm cycling through the different buttons and the relays react accordingly to their assigned buttons. So keys 1 to 8 drive the relays and uh, you will see soon when I press the 9 key it will hang up the call. There's not much hardware stuff going into this build, it's a matter of um, programming in Python. So here is the schematic, 5 volts goes to 5 volts to the SIM800, ground goes to ground to the SIM800, TX, TX goes to RX of the SIM800 and uh, RX goes to TX to the SIM800L. Another 5 volt rail goes to the relay board, ground goes to ground of the relay board and 12, 16, 20 and 21 goes to the inputs of the relay board in order to drive them. So now we're gonna download some software to program the Pi to do so. First we're gonna download Raspbian. It's the from their official website. I'll put the link in the description. Just scroll down. I chose light because I don't have a HDMI adapter or a USB adapter to put a keyboard or a monitor to the Pi. So click save, I already done that. Now you will need SD card formatter. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Select the device you want to format. Yeah, I made a mistake here, you should delete the volume label first. After that click format, click yes. It should go about in a few seconds. Now you are gonna need Win32 disk imager. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, this is a Windows machine. Select the image, select the destination and hit right. This is gonna take a while, but I'm gonna speed up the video. So you do, if you, we're gonna need a Linux machine, so if you don't have that, I'm gonna write in the description how you can go about that with a Windows computer. So after write is successful, Take the card out of the PC, insert it into the Raspberry Pi, put the, the power cable in and leave it for like 10 minutes. Afterwards take the card off and insert it into a Linux machine. Now you go to the roof FS file system, go to Etsy, VPA supplicant, now right click and open in terminal. We have to edit some files in order to connect to the to the router. So sudo nano vpa supplicant. So we're gonna write network equals brackets ssid equals uh, quotes your router's name and psk equals quotes your router's password. Afterwards click x Y, hit enter and you save it. Type exit. Now we're gonna go into the the boot volume. Select again open in terminal. Type sudo nano ssh. Just to make an empty file for the Pi to log in through ssh. Click X, Y and enter. Now you can close everything and put the card into the Raspberry Pi. Now you can open a new terminal. You can press Ctrl, Alt and T. So you're gonna write SSH Pi at your IP address of the Pi. Type yes and the default password for the Pi is Raspberry. Raspberry. Once logged in, type sudo su. Now we're gonna make an update and some configuration. Type rasby-config 
So we're going to go to system options and change the password first. It will going to prompt you to type the password twice. So type twice the new password. It won't show you anything when you type the password. Hit OK. Now we're going to go to advanced options. Expand file system. Click on that. It's going to take a few seconds. Hit OK. Now we're going to go to system options again. And we're going to go to boot auto login. Here you select console auto login text console automatically logged in as by user. And now we're going to go to the interface options on serial port select no and here select yes okay and hit the right arrow go to finish and hit yes now the pi is going to reboot once rebooted log in again type again ssh pi at the pi's ip and this time put the password that you changed earlier oh i mistyped it type sudo su and now we're going to update the pi so apt minus get update this is not going this is not going to take very long now we're going to type apt minus get upgrade and this is going to take a while so i'm going to speed up the video so if you're going to arrive at this prompt press y and enter and let it do its thing it's going to take quite some time once that done uh, you can type apt minus get install zip unzip we're going to need that soon type y and enter now type apt minus git install python minus pip probably this is installed but you never know yeah it is already installed and now type apt minus git install python free minus pip hit hit y enter and let it do its thing so python pip is installing now we are going to type pipe pip install pi serial so pi serial is installed now apt minus get install python minus setup tools python free minus setup tools so once this is installed i'll put a i'll put a link into the description about this link you should type so you type wget that link and it's going to download a file now you must unzip the file it's called master.zip so type unzip master.zip wait for it to unzip once the file is unzipped change the directory to the pi gpio minus master this is going to help us take control of the gpio pins of the pi type make and wait for it because it's going to take a while and type make install ah come on make make install sorry about that type make install and type enter hit enter now if you type pi gpio d it should run the, the it should run the script that controls the gpio pins now type crontab minus e press 1 press enter at the end of the file you're gonna write at reboot sudo home pi pygpio minus master pygpio d i'm gonna put a link to that in the description 
you can close it with Control X, Y and Enter. Now we're going to type apt minus get install minicom. This is just to see if the GSA module is working. Press Y and Enter. Clear that out. So to see if the modem is working, we're going to type midi, minicom minus capital D dev serial zero minus B one one five two hundred, which is the baud rate. Now, if you type AT, you should get an OK. So we get an OK. To close this stuff, press Control A X and Enter. Now we're going to write the script. I'm going to speed up the video, but you can copy the script from the video description. So there's no point to... Or you can pause the video if you like to. But I think it's more comfortable to copy it from the video description. So basically, number 5 and 6 is going to ring two phones. So it's a little bit different than 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And number 7 is going to hang up the call, number 8 is going to put all the pins high and number 9 is going to put all the pins low. So to start the script just type python cm800.pi and hit enter. So if you want the script to start when the pi boots up just type cron tab minus e and at the end of the file type at reboot sudo python home pi cm800.pi and click X, Y and enter to save the file. Now we just type reboot, hit enter and that's it. We can play and we can remotely control stuff over our phone. So this is the final set the setup that I came up with. So if I call the number it should work. Hopefully it will. So if I press 2, that lights up, press 1, puts it back off, so if I press 3, uh, no I mean 4, this should light up, it's kind of sketchy, if I press 3, should put it off, if I press 5, one of the phones will ring. If I press 6, the old phone will ring. And if I press 7, it will hang up the call. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and if you did so, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Have a good one. Cheers.